crypto products and NFTs are unregulated and can be highly risky. There may be no regulatory recourse for any loss from such transactions. Hello and welcome to ET Markets Crypto TV, powered by Mudrex. This is an educative and informative series of conversations aimed at decoding different aspects of the nascent asset class crypto. I'm Aloni Bhatt, and today we will take a close look at security essentials for those who want to invest in crypto, the things you should not be taking for granted. Cryptos, like any asset class, are subject to all sorts of risks, and you should think carefully before you decide to invest in an unregulated space. Now, today we have two experts to discuss by far the most important topic, which is managing safety when it comes to crypto. And I'm very happy to welcome Dilip Chinoy. He's the chairman of Bharat Web3 Association. Welcome to Economic Times, sir. Thank you for having me. And we have with us Edel Patel. He's the co-founder and CEO of Mudrex. Edel, wonderful to see you again. Thank you, Edel. Thanks for having me again. All right. Uh, so to get right into it, crypto scams increased significantly in the third quarter of 2023. Uh, this is according to a, a bug bounty platform, Immunify, uh, and it was part of their report. Uh, part of the increase uh, was because of the mix and hack on September 25th, when attackers stole nearly $200 million. Totally in Q3 of 2023, nearly $686 million was lost across the Web3 ecosystem, in which $663 million was lost due to hacks across just 49 specific incidents. So, you know, uh, these were just frauds which were recorded, uh, and this represents a 60% increase compared to the quarter three of 2022. So this is quarter three uh, 2023 versus quarter three of 2022, a 60% increase. Uh, there is no clear picture of data pertaining to India. Every other day, there are reports of scams, frauds, which are linked to these VDAs. On the other hand, India has emerged to be the second largest crypto market in the world uh, by raw estimated transaction uh, volume, which is approximately uh, $270 billion in crypto assets in the 12-month period between July 22 and June 2023. So, of course, this is a lot of data that I've thrown right at the beginning. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Chinoy, my first question is to you. You know, how vulnerable does this make the average Indian crypto investors uh, investor, 75% uh, of whom are between 18 to 35 years in age in a country where the knowledge base in this nascent asset is low and there's no proper dedicated government uh, regulator and where FOMO may be driving investments? So, Maloney, actually, all the data is correct. Okay. Uh, you also mentioned that there's no data for India. But what is not being reported anyway, what is the actual data of frauds in the typical online financial services market? Actually, if you look at it, that data is significantly more than this data. So, the amount of fraud that is happening on online other scams other than crypto is larger than what is happening in the crypto space. Okay. Um, and therefore, because there is a feeling that this space is unregulated, that people, you know, there's no, you know, you yourself, there's, there's no regulator, you know, uh, in India. Right. But if you look at the crypto space in totality across the world, and if you look at tokens, right, there are tokens Indonesia, even Indonesia, which is a developing country, has whitelisted 250 tokens, right? Uh, MICA has uh, got some tokens that are listed. So has VARA. Other geographies have actually whitelisted tokens. Now, if a person is trading on those tokens in India, right, you can't technically say that he is actually working in an unregulated space, right? Uh, because uh, you have to, you know, meet uh, KYC norms in India. You have to meet uh, reporting norms and anti-money laundering and terrorist financing. You have to meet the certain uh, norms that are there, right? The challenge, as you really, uh, you know, bothered about, is the age group of the people and the not the lack of awareness, but the urge to actually make quick money, right? And therefore, they uh, young people tend to look at tokens that are, uh, you know, accelerating, uh, appreciating overnight by X percentage, Y percentage, right? 
even if you look at the two most stable uh, coins which are traded uh, world over, not stable coins, but coins that are stable in value, etc., like Bitcoin and ETH, right? There are very little scams pertaining to that, right? Um, okay, so the type of scams can be broken into, you know, you talked about drug pool, you talked about other things. The, the type of scams could be broken up into two aspects. One is by the issuer of the token who does something to defraud with the intent to defraud uh, people like me and you, if you, I don't invest, I don't know if you invest in, in crypto, but defraud us. The second is hacks, right? Now, hacks uh, are unpredictable. They're, 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 you know, you can, people can hack into bank accounts, people can hack into data. There's a whole lot of things that is happening. The only difference here between a hack in the virtual digital asset space and the other space, it's very difficult to reverse the transaction here. You can freeze a wallet, you can do everything, right? So I think the challenge here is, one, the age group of the people, two, the lack of information, you know, uh, about what is happening. And But there are companies in India, in fact, some of them are members of BWA, who actually do regular analysis of the various tokens uh, that are being listed all over and give you, like, like you have an equity research report that companies are actually doing that in the token space. So people should look at it in that context, you know, research the token that you're going to do. Looking at the white paper is a bit difficult, but, you know, research it uh, and, and don't get fooled by a lookalike website. You know, uh, that happens in banks also, that happens in other places also. But don't get fooled by a, by a lookalike uh, website and don't invest you know, 100% uh, of your investment kitty into one asset. You have to, you know, you got to look at it in a different kind of a way. Good points. You know, just the point about um, scams which happen in other spaces. Now, we're talking in terms of volume of transaction, right? There, the monies involved may be fairly large, but it's not like they're taken for granted. Of course, they're reported. But the thing is that, you know, those spaces are also regulated. And as you rightly pointed out, uh, there is a, you know, mechanism for at least someone to go and get that addressed. There, there does not seem to be a mechanism as far as crypto is concerned. Well, do you know what's the currency that's most commonly used for scams? No, you tell me. The US dollar. That is the we should ban all this dollar. And it's probably the most regulated asset that's out there. Okay. Uh, I think the, the point that, uh, by the way, I completely agree with all of Dilip's points. And uh, going back to this uh, narrative that uh, crypto is scammy and a lot of resources use it for scam, actually, that's the part that gets highlighted a bit more. And a lot of the other scams that continue to happen in general are not talked about simply because it's not highlighted. Uh, from a volume of scam perspective, it's actually not that large. The legal recourse for that is also fairly standard because it's not something unique that's happening here. Scams are an outcome of greed, not an outcome of the asset class, as Dilip said. Right? It's just people wanting to make a quick buck. And ever since money has existed, people have always wanted to make a quick buck. And it's just time and time again with technology or with new assets emerging, there are always players who come up who try and create these systems that help you make quick money, and people do fall prey to such uh, right. to such events and to such scams, right? and that's why it happens. I would argue it has nothing to do with crypto. It actually also has nothing to do with regulations. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, there is a minor difference. Having a regulator in place helps create a sandbox environment where the number of regulated entities and as a result entities who are credible, who have fiduciary responsibility and are looking after the investor ends up rising. And having that regulations gives credibility to such institutions. And as a result, when people are wanting to participate in wealth creation, they go to the regulators. That's I think the main uh, value that regulations and regulators add to a system like this. And they tell that, okay, these entities are the entities that you should go to. If you go to these entities, you are less likely to be scammed. It's not like regulated entities don't do scams or haven't done scams in the past. Right? We've seen numerous such examples, especially in the securities markets. Hmm. Um, so, so regulations don't stop it. It's just that they, they reduce the probability of you getting scammed if you go to these entities. 
and i think the pathway on which india is or for that matter the rest of the world is is has become more and more and more and more clear right? like as to how these entities need to be treated and how they need to uh this is uh as per details shared by a report by investor education and protection fund authority and the indian institute of corporate authority more than 10 crore indians have been defrauded by top 15 pump and dump ponzi schemes in the last 3 decades leading to an average loss of about uh, 15.3 lakh per victim so when we look at crypto what are the non negotiable red flags to watch out for to recognize uh, you know so that investors can steer clear of some of the common crypto scams uh, you know like pump and dump phishing uh, giveaway uh, scams where you know they promise tokens of bitcoin and what are the precautionary steps that investors should take to protect themselves you mentioned you know one or two points uh, earlier but if you could dive deeper into it and edel i'd like you to add to it as well yeah okay so let me very very quickly right the first thing is that you know the best way i mean if you want to really uh, invest in the stock market right for example you'll go to a registered dealer or a registered company you want to go to somebody right and so here also the best way to actually do it is to go to a registered exchange which is compliant with the laws of the country right and there are many bwa members in fact all the bwa members are compliant according to the report uh, the answer in parliament there are 28 reporting entities in india right so the first thing is if you want to trade right go to these exchanges don't go anywhere else right very very clear you know that will address literally 70% of your problem okay the second thing that you've got to do is that you know it is a bit cumbersome to do a transaction uh, in an exchange at this point of time because of the lack of uh, you know banking rails and you know a whole lot of complications but it is worth your while to take the trouble to comply with all the steps that are there you know uh, that you have to do in a actual exchange and you know adul uh, edul could actually speak more uh, about that the third thing is you know look at each of these exchanges of responsibly listed tokens in mm-hmm. fact bw itself is in the, in the in the in the process of finalizing a token listing list uh, listing guideline right we already have in place a consumer uh, you know guideline consumer protection uh, guideline so invest in those tokens where you can have access to very good research reports and all of that and like i mentioned some bw members and there are companies who mirror the companies who do it you know the goldman sachs or the others you know uh, who do it for the uh, uh, market look at those report and invest wisely the fourth point is you know be, be very very clear don't invest 100% of your you know investment volume bucket that you have in one asset class spread your investment it's the same thing that you give for all investment uh, advice now if you follow these four points right you cannot be a, a, a victim of a phishing attack or, you know anything else um, uh, regulated entities is absolutely go only to the list of entities that are let's say if i am blind in india uh, getting an understanding of research is also very important so just like how dilip was mentioning at mudrex we have this section called as mudrex insights where right. in every single token we add fundamental technical and sentiment analysis all that data updated every single day so that users can understand what are they getting because the number one issue ends up being that someone some ma ke chacha ka ladka told you that you should buy xyz yeah. and then someone goes and buys that xyz and then comes back and says ki are to mera paisa nahi right like that's the number one issue that most people end up facing so that's the second part and then there are a couple of you know just rule of thumb things which is if something is too good to be true it probably isn't so don't do it and then build your wealth slowly like just do it step by step there is no need to put in all your money at the start you should start with a really small amount get some confidence get some understanding maybe if you want to do a regular sip and build wealth actively otherwise it's almost Uh, otherwise you are either going to be extremely lucky or extremely unlucky and either ways you don't that, that's not the kind of wealth that most people want to be okay doesn't okay. all right no no great points you know i, I mean 
if if people would just follow that i think a lot of uh, you know them would find themselves the real uh, problem in money is actually people don't uh, yeah because uh, because, because as you said na chacha ka ladka is becoming oh, it's, it's it's greed that drives and as a result what needs to come in is that there needs to come in some broader sense of protection around okay what should you be doing what should you not be doing alerts going out to users and so on and so forth on these platforms uh, and this can only happen once education in general increases and education can only in general increase once there are more and more entities that start talking about what you should do or what you should do not uh, i have been in this like mudras has been around for the last 6 years and to be honest over the last 6 years the quality of conversations that users do has changed dramatically so the average person that you talk to 6 years ago didn't know anything about crypto about security about you know saving and so on and so forth but now the the investor is actually fairly educated and is there is a small minor mistakes that end up doing and and that end up losing your money so just just don't do these things so it's the importance of being aware and alert all the time uh, that uh, cannot be underscored right and that, that's not just for crypto right it's a right. general maxim for absolutely. wealth absolutely Absolutely. Well, you know, there's there's some good news. Uh, for instance, the uh, Chainalysis uh, report said that uh, the number of Indian visitors dipped drastically. Uh, you know, visiting suspect websites uh, from uh, seventeen point eight million in twenty twenty to nine point six million in twenty twenty one. So, what you're saying actually bears out in terms of numbers. But Dilip, you know, can you share with us some insights into what are the uh, evolving strategies that are used now by scammers in the crypto space? You know, just so that. we can make our audience a bit more aware of you know some of the scams which may be happening which they may be not aware of and how would you say that you know investors stay informed uh, against these um, you know innovative and skillful uh, scams you know so the first thing i'd say milani is like you know i'll go back up to my four points right the first thing is i said you know go to a trusted uh, indian exchange right now you know unfortunately or fortunately this is a internet based it's a digital based uh, system okay and you know it's very easy if i were to take mudrex right and put edul on the spot so the his website may be mudrex.com right someone may actually put a w or a double r or double e or double x or you know put something in capital and something in low or you know add something right or or whatever it is so you know whenever you're going to a trusted website right uh, people will try and create look alikes the same thing happens in the banking sector you know a lot of it uh, there so the first thing that a person should really look at is you know actually verify the site that he's going to very clearly right and if the person does that then you know the rest actually uh, follows the second thing is that you know people might contact you right and say that you know i have this and you know while my thing is on this exchange you know we'll do a peer to peer transaction we won't go through the exchange we'll do a direct p to p transaction and you know that's where you don't know who the other person the other person is a di- digital person fake not fake etc cetera, etc cetera. so you know even at the risk of getting the 1% tds uh, deducted and you know the uh, the Thirty yeah. percent tax liable in your account. Don't go in for a peer-to-peer uh, transaction. Use the exchange, you know, kind of uh, uh, route uh, there. The third thing, again, you know, with as you said, you know, my uncle or aunt or nephew or someone said, you know, don't go to this exchange. Do this. You know, this is something which is happening. You know, Miloni has got a great scheme going. Invest with her. Don't, don't don't look, don't look at uh, that i'm just saying you know it's it you you you, you want to be a bit uh, you know you a bit yeah, yeah. some respect yes yeah and and then you know be very careful in terms of the security or network that you're transacting at because sometimes people might actually you know log into your network and mm-hmm. get passwords and other things and you know hacks and all actually happening right and always use you know at least try and use most indian people exchanges are looking at two factor authentication and other things so you know make sure that you follow uh, this kind of uh, process and 
you know, if you look at all of the Indian exchanges, and supposing you're not an Indian exchange and you, you know, disregard all the advice that Edul and all of us are giving and you want to go to a you know, exchange overseas, just ensure that that exchange is at least registered, regulated by some entity somewhere in the world. Okay. And also ensure that the tokens that you are dealing it, right, are whitelisted or accepted or something in some exchange anywhere or some country or some geography anywhere in the world, whether it be Indonesia, you know, UK, uh, you know, UAE or, or, or the EU or Switzerland or, you know, Japan, whatever it is. So that will actually enable you to happen. But, you know, if you don't want to do all of this, just, you know, be, go to the Indian exchanges, look at the uh, tokens that they're listing, et cetera, it is fine. So if you just take these precautions, okay, and of course, storage precautions, other precautions have to be there, right? Uh, you can look at an offline storage with security or, or you can give custody to the exchange if you trust the exchange to be there. You can do a variety of things here. And you got to have your head on your shoulders. You can't think that, okay, you know, something is coming or, oh, you know, the... Uh, you know, because of the ETF announcement, Bitcoin is going to double from 44 to, you know, 88. And don't think about that, right? Okay. And you have to have the uh, spirit and the guts to take the down with the up. Okay. And I think the point that Edul made was that, you know, invest a SIP, you know, small amounts uh, every year, right? Or every month, or, you know, some people invest every day, right? A small amounts, that's a better strategy and less chances of getting scammed as you go forward. All First right, of all, there's nothing like getting rich overnight. Yeah, those guys who bought Bitcoin at $1, they did not get rich overnight. It still took them four or five years, you know, uh, for them to recoup the money. Right. Uh, but you know what, Edel, why don't you come back on that uh, point of yeah. the Bitcoin surge and what implications would that have for rising Bitcoin scam, uh, crypto scams? You know, would you say that when Bitcoin rises, uh, you know, the propensity for scams uh, goes up, and then when it falls, like, uh, and, and that's all, that's what always happens, right? Like you earlier quoted a chain analysis uh, study that said that. Mm -hmm. uh, the scam amounts have gone down. I would just argue that because prices are down and there is less people interested. It, it's never, it, it, it always happens that as prices rise or as hype cycles increase, more and more and more scams. Mm -hmm. Again, this is not something only for crypto, it also happens for securities. Right. Like in the equities markets as well, the same thing happens. If the stock markets are in a, in a bull run, then there are suddenly these influencers or gurus who sell you these stock tips which end up being pump and dump schemes that the SEBI has had. For the last few uh, months and so on and so on. But, so, you know, but you know, SEBI comes in, right? Like SEBI came in and said, hey, market gurus, you can't do all of these things anymore. Now, what happens with crypto is that you don't have that sort of a regulator that come, comes in and says, okay, wrongdoing, shut shop, do this, do that. You know, there is an oversight. I'm not saying that there is not an oversight. And of course, there is a taxation policy. You know, everyone has to, I, I mean, you obviously the uh, outflows and flows are very closely looked at. But the thing is that it still seems like, you know, there isn't any big brother watching. And therefore, uh, you know, people who who think they can get away with it. And as you said earlier, you know, people who think that, you know, in this gray area, there is a possibility for me to make money. When these two collide and you just cannot regulate it, what do you do? So let me, let me actually give three examples of scams that... Are, have, have been going around in the recent past. We keep a very close eye on it so that we can protect ourselves. Right? Mm -hmm. So, one example of greed are these uh, telegram scams where users are added to some random telegram groups. There is a guru who comes and says that, okay, you do these, these, these activities and you park this much money and your money will get doubled in like 15 days or whatever. Right. And users typically do it once. They get the double money, they do it twice, they get the double money the third time. By this time, they parked about 15, 20 lakhs, the money is lost and then right? This has nothing to do with crypto. It's just greed that you would come and uh, get in. The second such example is a very recent thing that happened. It's a phishing attack where uh, a, a lot of users in crypto got emails from an official looking handle of uh, MetaMask or Trust Wallet saying right. that KYC is now mandatory on MetaMask and Trust and click 
this link can complete your KYC. It's a very classic example. And it's, by the way, it's happened to a lot of folks where the example that Dilip was giving, where Mudrex can be replaced with a double M or yes. a double R or an NDRR or interchange, very common. Happen always. And again, nothing to do with crypto. These are basic phishing scams that people go through that you should just be aware of. And the third scam, which is actually related to crypto that happens, is what happens on, let's say, platforms like Binance P2P or Zerex P2P or right. for that matter. Uh, uh, okay, so it's also about these P2P websites where users come and transfer funds, but they don't get that crypto back. Or the funds that they receive into their bank accounts are funds sourced from illicit activities so that bank accounts get frozen and so on. Right. Which is why the general advice is don't, I mean, the common denominator if you look at all of these things is that don't do things on platforms where you don't know about them. So basically come to platforms that are good, registered, regulated, well understood, well learned, and then ideally 90% of problems get solved over there. The only thing that you can't take care of is just human greed and greed is uh, don't wear off too much, uh, you know, from the straight and narrow path. Yeah. And of course, don't let greed drive you. Uh, so I think all good points. Thank you very much, uh, Dilip Trinoy and uh, Edil Patel for joining us today and uh, for giving us uh, deeper insights into how we can keep ourselves uh, safe, especially if we want to deal with crypto. Thank you very much. Thank you, Milan. Thank you, Milan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Crypto products and NFTs are unregulated and can be highly risky. There may be no regulatory recourse for any loss from such transactions.